Well, hello. So I hear you want to visit Rocky Mountain National Park in January. It can be a great time to visit, but if it's your first time visiting in January, there's a lot you need to know. The winds are really beginning to pick up out here and a storm is moving in. So why don't we head back to town and I'll fill you in on all the details. Well, thank you for joining me down here. It's nice to be back into the warmth and have something hot to drink. Though I must say that there's nothing better in my mind than being out in the mountains on a snowy winter's day with skis on my feet. Well, so you're planning a visit to Rocky Mountain National Park in January. That's great. I've spent 20 years here enjoying and exploring this special place. So let me fill you in on what you can expect for your visit. The first thing you need to know is that January and December are on average the driest and the coldest months of the year. However, don't worry too much. That doesn't mean that you won't have some warmer days or even a big snowstorm or two. Just know that it could be quite chilly and you probably won't see a lot of snow in the lower parts of the park or in Estes Park. Most of the snow will be located up in the mountains such as around Bear Lake. Now be sure to bring some really warm clothing and perhaps a thermos of hot tea to warm you up. Another thing to be aware of is that all winter long it can be quite blustery. This can really drop those temperatures making a beautiful 20 degree Fahrenheit day feel like zero degrees. On those days, I recommend that you choose some hikes that are in the forest where you'll be sheltered from the wind. You know, Bierstadt Lake is one of my favorite places to go on windy days. It's beautiful, snow covered, and uh, sheltered from that wind. However, if it is blowing so hard that it is pushing you around, then change your plans and do something inside. On those days when the winds are really howling, the winds often knock down trees in the forest. So it's the best to avoid those days and spend them by the fire, playing games or reading a good book. The good thing about the weather up here is that if you don't like what it is doing today, just wait and it could be completely different tomorrow. Now the weather in January is a lot like the weather in December, so be sure and check out my December video where I go into more detail on what you can expect from the weather. Now most of January is pretty quiet in terms of visitation. The one exception to this is the weekends. People from all over Colorado's Front Range come up on the weekends to snowshoe, sled, and ski. So be aware that you might find larger crowds and even full parking lots at Bear Lake on Saturdays and Sundays. Now, if you arrive by 8 a.m. or if you come after 3 p.m. on those weekends, you can usually find a parking place. Now, the rest of the week, you shouldn't have any problem at all. At this time of year, all that you need to enter the National Park is a National Park Pass, and those can be purchased right at the park entrance. Uh, in terms of the timed entry permit, that system doesn't go into effect again until late May, so take advantage of it while you can. Now, one of the great things about visiting in the winter is that much of the wildlife stands out quite starkly against the white snow, and so they're often much easier to see. You'll usually find mule deer grazing alongside the lower portions of Trail Ridge Road on the east side of Rocky. And you may see elk in the larger meadows such as Moraine Park or Horseshoe Park or Beaver Meadows. Now, bighorn sheep are often seen in the winter along Fall River Road between Estes Park and the Fall River Entrance Station. Otherwise, I'd recommend that you drive down Highway 34 towards the little town of Drake. And on the way, just before you get to Drake, you'll often see bighorn sheep on the side of the road during these winter months. Now, on the west side of Rocky Mountain National Park, those moose will be very easy to see as they stand out very clearly against the snow. And occasionally we do see them on the east side as well, so keep your eyes open. There are over 60 different species of mammals in the park, so keep your eyes open and you may catch a number of other creatures going about their daily lives. 
just be extra sure to give them space so that you don't disturb them because winter is a very challenging time for these animals. They need to save every calorie they can to get them through these long, harsh winters. Now, if you dress properly, there's a lot you can do in the winter. The most popular activity is snowshoeing up in the Bear Lake area. If you can walk, you can snowshoe. This will help you to float above the snow and provide great traction on icy trails as well. Now, if it hasn't snowed in a few days, you're going to find most of the trails will be heavily snow packed and often very icy. On those days, you can either use those snowshoes or micro spikes to keep you from slipping. Now, another thing you can do is head over to Hidden Valley. Over there, you'll find a small sledding hill with a warming house. This is a lot of fun for children, but it is best done on days when it's not too windy, as the sledding hill is quite exposed to the wind. Now, Hidden Valley was a popular downhill ski area for about 35 years, but in 1991, the National Park Service removed the lifts and have allowed the area to return to its natural state. Backcountry skiers such as myself still ski here, though we have to make our own way up to the top. Now, snowshoes, micro spikes, hiking poles, sleds, and even backcountry ski gear can be rented in Estes Park. Now, if you're in Grand Lake, visit Never Summer Mountain Products as they have all the winter gear you need over there. There are just a couple of extra things to keep in mind when visiting in January. Firstly, be sure that the vehicle you drive up here has proper snow tires. If you're renting a vehicle, I recommend that you ask for one that is all-wheel drive with snow tires. Despite what you might think, all-wheel drive vehicles will give you much better traction in the snow than a four-wheel drive vehicle. Also, be aware that the park may implement a traction law when the roads are snowy or icy, and then only allow vehicles into the park that have proper tires for snow and ice, or alternatively, snow chains. So, come prepared. Secondly, if you're one of those people who plans to ski or snowshoe farther back into the mountains, be sure that you are avalanche educated. The Colorado snowpack is known for being especially prone to avalanches, and that's true for Rocky as well. You can find more information about the current avalanche conditions at the Colorado Avalanche Information Center. I'll put a link in the description below. Lastly, you should be aware that the roads connecting the east side and the west sides of Rocky Mountain National Park are closed until next summer. So if you want to drive between the east and west side, you need to make a three-hour detour around the mountains. Well, those are the basics of what you need to know when visiting in January. If you come prepared and with proper expectations, you're going to have a fantastic time. And while you're here, why don't you stop by my gallery in Estes Park to warm up and say hello. We'd love to see you. Well, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all soon. If you would like to learn more about Rocky Mountain National Park, visit my website, RockyMountainNationalPark.com. For my books and calendar, visit RockyTrailPress.com. And if you're visiting Estes Park, Colorado, be sure and stop in my gallery, Images of RMNP.